Hi there. I've got a brand new Aram. I'd like to show you. I'll just start by playing something. Um, <laughs> this is, uh, the Aram, my 14 inch member of the comma series, which are these guitars I make with the offset sound hole and radial bracing. This one's made out of tunnel 14. Um, if you've followed me at all, you know, I'm building a lot these days out of the tunnel 14, uh, which is just fantastic old redwood. It's a felled 150 years ago or more. Um, the back and sides are made out of this perfectly quartered uh, cocobolo. And cocobolo, you, you just don't really see it like this very often. I think the trees are kind of, they tend to be small and, and uh, a little bit gnarly. And so to get a set like this is pretty special. Um, cocobolo is a really dense, very resinous wood, perhaps the most resinous of the rosewoods that African blackwood maybe um, but it produces the most incredible sustain in a guitar uh, that's its contribution to the sound I mean there are other things but boy the sustain you get out of a coca bolo is something else it's just uh... it just goes on and on and on um, this translates into something really special when, you know, I, and I tend to play a lot up, up the neck and do lead work. Uh, and this guitar almost sounds, it almost feels, I mentioned this in a previous post about it. It almost feels like you're getting more out of it than you put in as if it were somehow amplified. Um, I just think you're not used to getting that much return for your energy from an acoustic guitar. It's like playing a Telecaster or something. You just pluck it lightly and all this sound comes out. It gives you, um, at least for me as a player, it gives me confidence because these notes bloom. Um, they bloom. Like, that's not really that common with an acoustic guitar. You produce the sound and immediately starts to decay. It's almost as if these well up and um, like, a, like a string bass or something. Um, uh, what, I lost my train of thought. What else can I tell you about this guitar? The comma series has a an elevated fingerboard. Um, the, fe the elevated fingerboard 
is there for a couple of reasons. The, the, the primary reason is ergonomic, ergodynamic. Ergonomic? Jeez, I'm just having a hard time with words here today, but I'm sure someone will correct me and give me the right word. Um, ergonomically speaking, it, it allows you to access these, um, these notes all the way up the fingerboard. Um, like that really becomes part of the instrument. I, I, I think, you know, before I got into building guitars and I, and I was a, a more um, less ambitious player, maybe, I just thought that they kind of ended at the octave. Like a guitar just kind of ends right there, at least an acoustic guitar. And this stuff up here was no man's land. But it's oh, almost a complete repetition of the bottom part. It's a, it's a shame to not use this part of the instrument. <laughs> Admittedly, many people will use it better than me, but um, there's a whole bunch of of instrument up here to be used and the elevated fingerboard gives you easy access to that it also keeps the pick or your fingers um, off the top uh, when you're playing a uh, a regular guitar with a sound hole there there's not that much of it is going to be exactly where your fingers are but i noticed when i did the first iterations of these guitars um, or ideas with a with a solid uh, soundboard here that you could bang the top so this gets the the pick off the top and then the third and final thing is that it changes the string angle um the departure of the string from the saddle here and changes it where the an ordinary uh steel string guitar the neck angle will be um negative like this so it's actually tilting back down from the guitar at a couple of degrees one and a half ish and when you bring the the neck up like this, it changes the uh, the angle of the string break, and I think that that gives this instrument more of a sort of a harp like sound, more um, a prolonged decay, and more of this sort of like blooming sound. Um, also, the the uh, cutaway here, I. It goes all the way to the 18th fret before it leaves. So you've got access up to the 21st fret. In fact, some of these I do a 22 fret neck. Um, so again, uh, actual usable portion of the fingerboard. This has this um, cutaway, this uh, sound hole that's offset. And this is, this is the whole thing about the guitar is that it allows the entire top here to be used as a single um, diaphragm and gets the sound hole out of the way. And I'm, I'm able to use this radial bracing, which contributes greatly to its volume and sound. But having the sound hole over here really puts a lot of the sound right into your face. So if, if you've been if you're playing your regular guitar and you play here and you hear all that delicious sound that you as a player are not getting to enjoy um, without craning your neck over the top, this thing, this uh, offset sound hole here, I call it the 3D sound port because it actually cuts down a little bit into the side here. So when you're playing, you're getting some of that delicious uh, sound that comes out of there. Um, it's obviously a multi-scale instrument, right? This one has a 25-4 long scale uh, for the bass and a 24-9 short scale for the trebles. And this sort of solves that age-old quandary of like, do I want the brassiness and the, the intensity of a long scale instrument or do I want the sweet, fat sound of a short scale? And you get to have both here expressed where they are most... Um, beneficial to the overall sound of the guitar. This is only a half of an inch uh, difference between low to high. So the, it's really, there's no learning curve. It doesn't feel weird. In fact, when you're sitting up here, you can't even really see it. And you certainly don't feel it. I've never had anyone say, oh, this is, this is a different kind of guitar. They just don't even notice that it's a, a multi-scale until they're told if they didn't notice it already. Oh, uh, what else can I talk about? Um, well, I mentioned the, uh, the radial bracing, and that's really the heart 
and soul of this instrument um, is a, a break from the, the traditional X bracing, uh, the radial bracing, which have these fan, these uh, braces coming out from the, the bridge plate underneath, rather like the spokes on a wheel. And that allows this top, you know, if you look at an X braced um, guitar, the, the soundboard is broken up into all these sort of random shaped chunks rhomboids stuck together and they they end up functioning as a as a single unit but you have to fight for it um and with the radial bracing you get this monopole this thing where the top is acting as a as a speaker cone um with very little uh effort <laughs> and it just it just makes the 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 bass i am sure you've heard this on this guitar <laughs> An awful lot of bass coming out of a 14 inch guitar um, and that translates through the whole series each each guitar produces yet more um, bottom end than the one preceding it but this isn't just like a oh let's get the big bottom end going it's like a this in particular this 14 inch guitar um, produces a very even sound so you have great note separation and you can hear the lines and the trebles um, this is a great studio instrument and um, I find it to be a very pleasant size. I'm not a huge guy, but I like how this fits on my lap. I have the feeling that I've been talking for a long time. I'll play a quick thing and then I'm out of here. So there it is, another Aram. Thank you for watching, and uh, see you later. <laughs>